Hello, good morning, and welcome to Kimmel Bay Church as we turn once again to our meditation from the Scriptures. And today we're looking at the New Testament and a little book towards the end of the New Testament by the Apostle James. James chapter 1. Do read this uh, through. It's only about 20 odd verses, the uh, first chapter, uh, while I um, ask you to press the pause button. Welcome back. And uh, let me just say that the Bible, the Bible pulls no punches. The Bible tells it as it is. The Bible is straight down the line. If the Bible's got something to say to us, whether it's comfortable for us or not, it says so. <laughs> and James, the book of James, is no exception. This man, James, was generally, uh, uh, it's generally agreed that he was the author of this book and that he was the brother of our Lord. He was the child of Mary and Joseph, and uh, he played a leading role in the Council of Jerusalem, if you look in Acts 15 and so on. And, and this book is full of practical advice, full of practical advice about living the Christian life. It was written mainly to believers um, after Stephen's death, after Stephen had been martyred. <clears throat> And very relevantly, James refers to trials and temptations. He refers to listening and to doing. He refers to obeying. He refers to showing favour or not. He refers to faith and works in the right order. We haven't time to cover all of that today, but um, I recommend that you read the whole of the book of James, it's only five chapters, and it's absolutely lovely, and it's good, good advice for Christian living. There's a, a good section on the tongue, um, what we say and how we say it. That's wonderful advice, really, because we all run away with our tongues, don't we, really? He talks about rich oppressors. He talks about patience in suffering. And the, he talks about prayer and the prayer of faith. He starts, really, by talking about um, con considering it joy to, to experience suffering. Now, that doesn't mean to say you've got to go and look for it. Uh, but it does mean that when suffering comes, we commend ourselves to the Lord because sometimes the Lord allows sufferings to come into our lives to hone us, to bring us to further maturity, to enable us to lean hard upon him. Where our faith is tested, verse 3 and 4, in perseverance and it brings maturity. He goes on to talk about other things. He talks about wisdom, uh, asking God for wisdom. Uh, James says that any wisdom that comes from the earth and earthly men and women is a waste of space. The only wisdom worth having is wisdom from God. Where do we get that wisdom? Well, we get it principally from his word and we get it from the still small voice within. We get it from fellow Christians. We get it from circumstances that we see in the light of God's purpose and his providence in our lives. What do I want wisdom for? Well, I want wisdom so that I can walk closer to the Lord Jesus and lead a Christian life which is more worthwhile. He talks about the sources of temptation. He reminds us that everyone is tempted, but what we need to do is to be careful from the point of view that there are temptations that are of our own making. We need to be careful not to walk down what used to be called uh, the occasions of sin. Opportunities lend themselves in certain areas of our lives and we need to avoid them. He talks about not blaming God. Um, none of us are really at peace if we're in a state of unconfessed and forgiven sin. Don't let's blame God for the fact that we haven't come to him and bowed before him and asked him for forgiveness for our sins and a fresh start, fresh cleansing. It's there. It's there. The blood of Christ has paid the price for our sins and cleansing and forgiveness is there. He talks about an unchanging God in verses 16 to 18. I hope you're following these verses with me and perhaps you'll uh, play this back and you'll go through this chapter because when you've got time. He talks about all good things from an unchanging God. And he moves towards the end of the chapter and he talks about the very important principle of listening and doing. 
listening and doing. Uh, there are many ways to listen, aren't there? Many ways to listen and there are many ways to respond. And James rem reminds us that we need to be very wise in our response. We need to be slow to speak. <clears throat> if you like, we need to be a bit of a backbencher. Bit, bit of a backbencher, you know. Think before we speak. Think before we respond. Think before we retaliate. We need to be slow to anger. It's very easy to respond angrily, isn't it? And there, uh, we need to remember a wonderful principle that I've often <clears throat> thought about and been glad of, and that is the fact that God is sovereign. And we see that in the Old Testament time and time again, don't we? The sovereign Lord said this and the sovereign Lord said that. But God is sovereign. There is a danger, James reminds us in verse 22, and I leave you with this thought. There is a danger of sitting under the exposition of God's word, uh, hearing God's word um, helpfully shared and so on, and even agreeing with it, even agreeing with it, and straight away dismissing it. And we dismiss it by neglect, or we dismiss it by intention. It is possible to just deliberately turn and walk away if, if what we've heard doesn't suit us. And uh, it's also <clears throat> possible to <clears throat> uh, be guilty of neglect as we uh, don't take in what God says. The pathway of blessing is to listen and to obey. There's an old hymn that says, well, trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Let me recommend James, the book of James to you very, very strongly. Uh, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy it. It's a wonderful book, full, packed full of advice for living the Christian life, packed full of, of guidance as to how to respond to God's word. This man, James, this lovely man, who uh, was part of uh, Jesus' earthly family, and uh, we're so used of God. Let's pray, shall we? Lord, we remember those words, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Will you help us, dear Lord, to take the words of James <clears throat> and to think about them and to put them into practice? We thank you for all the wonderful, the wonderful practical advice you've given us in your word uh, for living the Christian life. Lord, we want to live the Christian life in a manner that pleases you. And we pray that you'll help us by your Holy Spirit to do that. Bless us, dear Lord, as we uh, accept these truths from your precious word and help us to act upon them. For your name's sake. Amen. Goodbye. The Lord bless you.